Hey, hey, Blue Table fans! I'm here to do a preliminary review of the High Elves Codex for Warhammer Fantasy, a game put out by a little-known company called Games Workshop. And first off, this is the last edition High Elf Codex. And this is the new one, so it's larger, also hardbound, and uh, with color. So here's, the, here's some of the old art, and let's take a look at some of the new art. Oh, look at that really quite handsome. So Games Workshop is really stepping up their game and catching up to companies like uh, Privateer Press. Um, I haven't read any of the, of the fluff, I just dove right into the rules. And uh, first off, um, the most notable thing, because I like to dive right into the core units, is that uh, instead of three different types of core units, there are now four different types of core units. And this really changes things, uh, especially since uh, you now see fast cavalry, fast cavalry and core. And uh, so the old core only had three options. And uh, of course, in my opinion, uh, Lothar and Seaguard were definitely the best of the three. Um, archers see a one point reduction. Uh, spearmen are the, are the same. Uh, now, High Elves don't all have Always Strike First anymore, which before was Speed of Assyrian, uh, but actually they do. Uh, they, it just says Always Strikes First on every, single, on every single entry, and so I'm not sure why they did that. I imagine it was so there was no confusion with uh, the monsters and stuff, which did not have that special rule. So, uh, so they, they did lose Speed of Assyrian, but they didn't lose Always Strikes First which is something to note. So Illyrian Reavers um, is important to note. These models, they have the old terrible ones still on the web store, uh, the Games Workshop web store, uh, but you want the new awesome ones that are from the Isle of Blood kit. So if you're making a High Elf army and you want to include Lothar and Seaguard, you get 10 of those per Isle of Blood kit. And uh, once you add in all the other things you get in that kit, it is definitely a good deal. It's $100. Just on the High Elves end, uh, you get five Illyrian Reavers, ten Lothern Seaguard, ten, um, uh, what is it? I can say it, uh, Sword Masters. So, um, all right, anyway, um, <clears throat> and you get a hero and some other stuff, I can't remember. Uh, and a hero on Griffin, a ma uh, an Archmage, and then a hero on Griffin. So you get a lot in the Isle of Blood kit. Oddly, Isle of Blood kit doesn't appear in the High Elf section. So I think new players might be confused by that. Um, so uh, notable new entries uh, for heroes is the Lore Master of Hoeth. This is the Sword Master Lord. And he's a level 2 wizard, but he gets, he gets 8 spells. He gets all eight signature spells from the lore of battle magic. So I really, I'm not sure what that means. Something tells me there's probably something twisted in there uh, because it's, it's always good to know exactly what you're getting magic-wise, so there's an advantage to that. Uh, one thing I did notice is, and this is probably the reason why you can't buy Phoenix Guard anywhere, is Phoenix Guard have a four-up ward, ward save, uh, which is called Witness to Destiny, and, but if you go to uh, High Elf Magic, you'll notice that the lower attribute for High Elf Magic is that each time a spell uh, from this lore is successfully cast, the caster and his unit immediately gain plus one to their ward save. And so um, that is really just absolutely amazing. The caster and his unit. That is just absolutely ridiculous. So you give an Archmage a Talisman that gives him a four-up ward save, and then he, uh, he casts one spell from this, they're up to a three-up. He casts another spell from it, they're up to a two-up ward save, because it is, it is cumulative, uh, which can then be increased by further castings thanks to this lower attribute until the beginning of the caster's next magic phase. So, quite frankly, uh, a wizard with a Talisman and a unit of uh, Phoenix Guard is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, so, uh, all right. Um, now, back to uh, Core. So, quite frankly, I'm looking at this, and by the way, maybe following my advice isn't the best 
Uh, but I'm like, I want Illyrian Reavers as my core. And here's why. Look at Lothar and Seaguard. They have regular bows and spears, light armor. And look what an Illyrian Reaver has. Has hand weapon, spear, light armor, and can be equipped with bows. So the Lothar and Seaguard are 11 points a model. With bows, these are 19 points a model. So uh, for plus 8 points a model, effectively you get 9 inch fast cav. And uh, that is just so maneuverable, so fast. And uh, so the question is, what roles can these guys play? And typically infantry are your center blocks and they are kind of the anvil. So they hold up other units by being steadfast while everything else moves in for the kill. And Warhammer Fantasy 8th edition is the game of having giant units of stuff. So, uh, so you, don't, you don't have a lot of units. Um, you might have some small units to just kind of maneuver around the edges. But quite frankly, um, if, you, if you change up the role of your core, that middle block, that anvil, so to speak, can be filled by other things. And in my opinion, that's Phoenix Guard. Phoenix Guard are ridiculous with that lower attribute. I mean, they were already fantastic. So new stuff, they get the Lothern Sky Cutter. And uh, I might point out that um, in this kit, you get a hero figure, which is nice. It's $60, uh, but you do get uh, that one extra. So I think that's not lost on Games Workshop. And of course, they are maximizing their, their profits. So good for them. And... <clears throat> But, of course, you do have a duty to the consumer to make your product uh, available uh, more readily. So, anyway. Um, all right, and then they also have the Phoenixes. So, um, the Phoenix kit uh, comes with the two different versions. They're both rare units, Flame Spire and Frostheart. Now, when I use, look at rare, I usually think in a 2,500-point game, which is a typical point level, you get 625 points of rares. So how do these add up? Well, the beauty is you can take two phoenixes, put them at 450, uh, and you could also take two bolt throwers. So effectively, a lot of things fit on here. Uh, now, great eagles, uh, notable changes, they now come in unit size one plus. So you can actually put them in units of eagles. And uh, they, they do have uh, po powers, swift sense and shredding talons. Uh, which I forget what those do. Uh, another, a downside of the Codex is that they, instead of like Phoenix Guard, it, it's like Wardens of Safari. So it becomes doubly hard. Excuse me, Wardens of Safari were Phoenix Guard. Well, you get, you get the idea. They don't, they don't actually get chosen of Assyrian. So it's really hard, it's really hard to find stuff. So Great Eagles, um, let's see, Swift Sense, uh, has always strikes first special rule, which you can give them. Uh, they have, I think, the same stat line, except weapon skill 5 now, apparently. Shredding Talons have armor piercing. So I got to tell you, that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so bolt throwers dropped to 70, and you can take twice as many. You can take four in a regular army and eight in a grand army. So bolt throwers, doesn't hurt to throw a couple bolt throwers in there. And I do not think they went down in their capability. Uh, and they're crewed by Sea Guard now. I don't think that makes a difference, but that's nice. Um, it's, it's interesting. It, uh, it just changed the fluff. Sisters of Avalorn seem really cool. They have uh, ballistic skill 5 uh, and a bow that is strength 4. In fact, let's see if we can find them. Uh, but they are rare, so they compete for those those rare spots. But uh, I heard fire a Fireheart Phoenix is the better of the two, um, but I really can't speak to that. So um, so you give them uh, the hero, which is the Handmaiden, and she has Quicksilver Shot, and so it's the whole unit becomes quick to fire, uh, which is which is really super. Uh, that means they can move and shoot without penalty. Last I knew, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm just kind of pulling this off the top of my head. So um, where is where is my bow of Avalorn? Is that in the equipment in front? Always so hard to find things. Here it is. 24 inch range, strength 4, arrows of Isha, flaming attacks, and volley fire. Okay. 
So flaming attacks is pretty awesome because you can take away whatever it is, regeneration. Okay, so what is what is Arrows of Isha? I wonder. See if I can even find it now. That's the weird thing. Is uh, yeah, I can't I can't even find it. Can't even find it. Isn't that lovely? So I have no idea what that does. Um, yeah, Bow of Avalorn. Yeah, maybe someone can tell me what Arrows of Isha is. Uh, Silver Helms saw an upgrade in that they have Ithilmar Barding now, which suffers no movement penalty to its characteristic. Uh, which is Oh, here's Arrows of Isha. Uh, models from Forces of Destruction suffer an additional minus one to their armor saves against wounds caused by Arrow of Isha. Ah, but not ward saves for demons. So, anyway, and I don't know what Forces of Destruction are. I imagine like evil armies. It's probably explained somewhere in the basic rulebook now. Uh, so let's just last talk about chariots. So before they had the regular Tiernock chariot, which everyone was familiar with, and then the lion chariot. Tiernock chariot went down to 70 points, so now you can just kind of throw those in as a unit upgrade, kind of, you know, to boost up one of your offensive units. The sky cutter is uh, 95 points and uh, flies, and then you can put this little bolt thrower on it for 25 points. So, all right, that is my initial impressions of the High Elves book. I can't, I'm, I've already started making my High Elf army, got all my stuff on order, and I look forward to doing some battle reports with that. So thanks for tuning in, and uh, be sure to check the liner notes for our contact information if you would like an army done up by us.